Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, Excel sheet column title. While this is an easy problem, it actually took me longer than I would have expected. And I'll kind of go into why that is. We're given an integer called column number and we want to return what the column title would look like in a spreadsheet like Excel. But to put it simply, we start with the character A and it maps to the number one and they kind of show that over here and then B will map to the number two and then going all the way down to Z which maps to 26 because there's 26 characters from A to Z. Pretty simple. Now when we pass 26 what we do after that is kind of just add a new digit like we have now double A so this will map to 27 a B will map to 28. So sort of we're just incrementing this first column or the last column, depending on how you're looking at it. And this would go all the way up to 26 more characters, which will get us to 52. Can you guess what that will look like? Probably a Z. Now, intuitively, they don't really show it here, but intuitively, what do you think comes after 52? If we try to increment Z, we're going to get back to A because Z is like the last character, of course. So then what's going to happen over here? If we leave it as an A, it's going to still be the number that corresponds to 27. But that's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get 53 over here. So to achieve that, we put a B here. So this kind of works like numbers when you think about it. Like this might be the number 19. And then when we try to increment this, we end up resetting back to zero, which over here might correspond to something like 10. And then we also increment this digit, which puts us back at 20. So really what this problem is about is converting base 10 numbers and when we say base 10, we mean like the general number system that we're used to, like 199. This is considered base 10. If we add one to this, it becomes 200. It's called base 10 because each digit, each position can have up to 10 different numbers from zero all the way up until nine. So now we're trying to convert this into a base 26 system where each digit like A, Z, each position can have up to 26 characters from A to Z. Now, there are a couple catches to this problem. And the biggest one is, let me just clean this up a little bit. The biggest catch here is that we're actually starting at one. We're programmers and we usually like to start at zero. And that's kind of how the number system works as well. Like with two digits here, the number of possibilities we can create, like the number of possible numbers we can create is gonna be 10 times 10 because in each digit we have up to 10 possible values we can choose and that's because we kind of start at 00, zero. And then we go to 0, 01, zero, 02, zero, 03 and that will bring us all the way up to like 100 different combinations from 0 up until 99. So that's pretty simple. Now, what happens with this over here cuz I was staring at this third e example and I just could not figure it out. So let me actually explain it. With base 26 and two positions, we can have up to 26 characters in each position. Well, intuitively, I was able to quickly look at this and realize that that number is actually gonna be smaller than 701, but how is that even possible? Well, to quickly explain, yes, we can have A through Z in this spot, and that's 26 possible characters. We can also have A through Z in this spot, and that's 26 possible characters. But this calculation, 26 times 26, actually doesn't include the ones that don't have a second digit, the ones that only have a single digit, which go from A through Z. So if we were actually going to count the total number of column titles that we could have that have up to two digits, but also could have one digit, we'd need to do 26 squared plus 26. And the reason for that is in our base 10 system, when we didn't have a second digit, like if we had a 19, that has a second digit. But if we had like 0, 09, the first digit is going to be 0 implicitly. But with our base 26 system, that doesn't really work. Like we're not, uh, if we have a B here and we have nothing here, it's not like we're implicitly putting an A because that kind of messes things up. This isn't like a super important thing, but I just wanted to explain like the intuition of why this problem is a bit different. And it all kind of goes back to the fact that in our case here, A, the first digit, the first character does not map 
to zero. It maps to one. It's a consequence of this. Okay, so now how do we actually solve the problem knowing all of that? Well, anytime we have a number between one and 26, it's pretty simple to map this to a character because we're always starting at the A character and we're just going to add the number that we get from this. And actually, we're not going to be adding this number because if we were to do that, one would end up putting us at B, but that's not what we want. So what we actually do here is take this number and uh, subtract it by one. So let's say N is the column number N minus one is what we're going to be adding to A. But that doesn't really work for the case where let's say we have 28, like this second example down here. So actually what we want to do to build this digit by digit or character by character, we actually take this number and mod it by 26. And when I say mod it, we actually do subtract one first, just like I kind of showed it earlier, but then we mod it by 26. What's that gonna give us in this case? It's gonna be 27 modded by 26, which is gonna be equal to one. So that tells us that our first character should be A plus one, and that's gonna put us at B. So what we did so far is just built that first character. So now how do we get the second one? Well, let's take our original column number, which was 28, and try dividing this now by 26, because that's just generally how numeric systems work. Like this is more of a math problem at this point. And by taking this number and dividing it by 26, we're asking how many 26s go into this original number, because that's going to tell us which character we should put in the next spot. And clearly, by looking at this, we can see that only a single 26 goes into this. So now our new column number, our new n value is going to be equal to 1. So now we're going to restart this whole thing with a new value of one. So we would take this number then, subtract it by one, then mod it by 26 and we would get zero. So that's gonna tell us that A plus zero, which is gonna be the character A, is gonna go in the next spot. So that works, but actually there was a subtle bug that we had and it becomes clear when we talk about the example input AZ because this maps to 52. Let's try the exact same algorithm. So we take 52, subtract one, and then mod that by 26, we get 25 left over. That's good. A plus 25 is gonna bring us to character Z. So we got our first character there. So we're good to go there. Now we take our number 52 and divide it by 26. We get two. And then if we repeat this same operation, two minus one, and then mod that by 26, we get one. And if we take A plus one, that's going to bring us to B. So we're off by one here. That's the problem. How did we get off by one? Well, basically, when we took the N value and subtracted one before we modded it, we should do the same thing down here. We should take our N value, subtract one, and then divide it by 26. So if we redo it, doing it like that, we get 52 minus one, divide by 26, and that will bring us to, I think, a one, because we're always going to round down. And then if we put like this one here and then redo this calculation, we will actually get A here instead of getting B. So again, the whole thing that makes this problem complicated, in my opinion, is the off by one error. And that's a consequence of starting at one instead of starting at zero. Okay, with all that said, now let's code it up. So what we're ultimately trying to do is build the output string. And we're going to do that while our column number is greater than zero. I didn't really show it in the drawing explanation, but at some point we're gonna divide this by 26 to the point that it's equal to zero. And that's when we know that we have no more characters to add to this result. So the first thing we do is get the remainder and that's gonna be column number minus one, just like I showed earlier and modding it by 26. And when you take this, what I was doing earlier was taking the A character and then adding the remainder. I don't know if it's actually possible in Python to do it like this. I think you can in C++, but I know that this for sure works. We take ORD of A, which gives us the ASCII value of this character, and then we add the offset, and that's probably a better name for this. Instead of calling it remainder, I'm going to call it the offset. And then we want to take this ASCII value and then convert it back into a character, which you can do like this in Python. 
And so this is the character that we want to add to our result string here. But you can kind of see the way we're building this is in reverse order. Like I showed earlier, we had like maybe a B come first. And then the next one that we're going to get is the character that goes in this spot to the left of B. But when you increment it like this, we're doing it in the opposite order. So when I actually return the result out here, I'm going to reverse this before I return it. So in Python, it's pretty easy. You can do that like this. We could also have built it in the correct order. We could have also built it as an array and then joined those characters at the end. I don't think that really matters. Like if an interviewer wanted me to do it that way, I would pretty easily be able to modify the code to do so, which is why I don't think that's like a super important detail. So now is the part where we in our loop actually update the column number. And remember, we're not just going to take it and divide it by 26. By the way, the double slash in Python means integer division so that it actually rounds down. But this, remember, is not enough. Just like up above how we had the negative one offset down here, we're going to do the same thing. So this is the entire code. Very quickly, what do you think the time complexity is? Well, on each iteration of this loop, we're going to be taking the column number and dividing it by 26 until it's equal to zero. And by definition, that is the logarithm function. Specifically, it's log base 26 of n. That is going to be the time complexity. And the way logs work, that is proportional to log big O of log n. You can tell that this is a very mathematical problem. It's not really much to do with data structures and algorithms, in my opinion. But running the code, we see on the left that it is pretty efficient. So if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.